beer and alcohol in general. For many people, these beverages are the solution to their problems, while for others, well, let's just say alcohol is the cause of them. But regardless of whatever you like it or not, these drinks have a rather interesting history dating back up to 9000 years in the past. That's right, beer is present since the beginning of human civilization. This golden distilled drink is not something new in our world. It has helped us to build empires, it has inspired philosophers, it has been the pride of religious men and even has been enough reason to break the law. And today, in this video, we will talk about his history, importance and we will use this information for a future work of the channel in which we will talk about of what if beer and alcohol had never existed. But for now, my name is Rafael Peraza and this is History of Alcohol and Beer and its importance. The Oxford Dictionary defines beer as an alcoholic drink made with germinated grains of barley or other cereals fermented in water and aromatized with hops, and it's the result of a chemical process that revolves around fermentation, and it's around that fermentation that our history will begin. Millions of years before humanity starts to exist and evolve, the chimpanzees discover something quite peculiar by accident. It turns out that when fruit fell from the trees and began to decompose, it generated a liquid that we call ethanol. Ethanol is the result of organic fermentation and has been used throughout our history as a chemical, as a solvent or an energy source, as a disinfectant and as the basis of for any alcoholic beverage, including beer. In fact, we erroneously call the alcohol in our drinks alcohol, when it should really be ethanol. Many chimpanzees purposely weigh that the fruit will begin to rot or ferment only to be able to ingest the ethanol. And so my friends, at that very moment and for the first time in history, a living being was intoxicated with a liquid coming from the fermentation process. Archaeological research dictates that humanity has been creating alcoholic beverages for approximately 10,000 years. However, the oldest record of a drink that we can consider similar to a beer dates back to the ancient Egypt, about 9,000 years in the past. The Egyptians consumed it daily, moreover, the workers were given even more beer to work more efficiently. It should be noted that the beers that we are talking about in this case was quite different from the ones we have today. While the Egyptians built pyramids and sphinxes at the promises to get a good old beers as prize, tribes and native societies of Asia, Africa and America and Europe also experimented with fermentation. For example, in America many people fermented corn to use it as a drink in a recreational way and even for rituals. In ancient Greece, everyone consumed it, from the low-class citizens through the soldiers, philosophers, mathematicians to even the kings themselves. But the civilized world, and I say civilized in quotes, tried to drink it less and less for a while after the arrival and annexation of Greece by the Roman Empire. The Romans did not drink beer because they considered it as a barbaric drink, but that does not mean that they did not consume any alcoholic beverage. Au contraire, but they prefer wine and its higher level of alcohol because they like to get drunk and puke all over the place and they used to call themselves civilized people, right? <laughs> After the fall of the Roman Empire, beer was again consumed in a stable manner and by everyone, although in any case many people from all over Europe never stopped drinking, right? The production of beer was something homemade, there were no distilleries or mass distribution, but that changed after the 14th century monks in the continent began to distill their own beer on a larger scale to consume it and sell it in bars and other monasteries, and all that process with God's blessing. <laughs> During the Middle Ages, beer was the favorite drink of the people and not only for its flavor and effects, but for its healthiness. It turns out that because of the poor living condition of that time, the water that people were drinking was not clean, not even close, full of diseases, dirt and many other things, making drinking from a well a matter of life or death. But due to the distillation process of the beer in which it was boiled, rest, boiled again and then sterilized, and the sterilized conditions of ethanol helped to clean the water that was used for the production of this beverage, beer was completely safe and clean at the time, 
And it's precisely for reasons like this that in 1516 the Duke of Bavaria creates the law of purity for beers. For the first time in history, for a beer to be considered good quality and clean, it had to carry out certain health and quality procedures in its production and it has to only use three ingredients, water, barley and hops. Although years later, with the discovery of yeast, it was also included in the original law. The influence of this drink was so big and so important that when the Europeans arrived in the Americas and began to build cities and other settlements, they marked as indispensable the bringing of beer to the new world. In fact, many founding fathers of the United States were beer lovers, such as George Washington, who even had his own distillery that produced a special beer exclusively for the man that later would be the first president of the country. In 1810, a German prince was about to marry his wife, and instead of having a traditional party as their costumes mandate, he decided that all the people of the Bavarian area would be invited to a special celebration, on the condition that they bring their own beer. This made the people from all parts of what we know today as Germany attend the party, bringing together a giant number of different types of beer. The party was so, so good and massive that the prince decided to repeat it every year. And with this, my friends, Oktoberfest was born. Even now, not being part of England, another huge beer lover by the way, since its independence, the United States created a history of uncontainable love for beer. Hundreds of breweries were opened throughout the country, different types and flavors of course. But unfortunately, this romance will not be very lasting, because during the prohibition, it would be illegal to consume any kind of alcohol. At that point, beer and alcohol have had their ups and downs, but where it was more of a topic of debate was in North America. During the years 1920 to the 1933, the government of the United States declared as illegal the consumption of any alcoholic beverage, hoping that this would lower the rates of violence, unemployment and alcoholism, but it was the complete opposite. There were so many breweries and other liquor companies in the country that unemployment went up a lot more after they went out of business. Mafias were created that secretly produced all kinds of alcohol. Clandestine bars start serving, where ordinary people who just wanted a glass of beer ended up interacting with criminals and even went so far to extort them. Crime was rising, police corruption too, everything was a disaster, and that's why only 13 years after the law passed, it was rebounded and cancelled, and all types of alcohol become legal again. But although the prohibition only brought problems to the United States, for Mexico this was a blessing. Thousands of Americans crossed the border to have a beer and many others even trafficked it. Beers such as Carta Blanca, Dos Equis, and a few years later Modelo and Corona made the American people see Mexican beer as a very good one and with an excellent taste and price creating an influence and preference to Mexican beers that until today is still very strong. During World War II, due to the high need for food on the battlefront, the materials needed to make beer were destined exclusively to feed the soldiers. This made that corn and other ingredients replace the original ones for a while, thus lowering the quality of beer in North America, and yes, also in Mexico, since this country also helped the US selling a lot of its food. After the end of the war, almost everyone in North America had become accustomed to this new mild test in beer, causing many countries across the continent to do so. And that's why today most of beers in America are very soft compared to the European ones. In 1973, Miller Lite changed the rules of the game. Commercial with beautiful women, friends having a good time, beaches, parties, advertising in sport events. Everything that we see normal in the marketing campaigns of many beers today was made for the first time by Miller. And from there, everything will be very similar to what we see today. And having already done this necessary summary of the importance and influence throughout the history of beer and alcohol in general, we hope that very soon we can talk about an alternate reality where such drinks will never have existed. But for now, what do you think about the video? Do you find it interesting? Comment below. If you like this type of video in particular, subscribe now. I will talk about alternate realities, history, the future of technology and many other things. If you have already subscribed and you want to help the channel grow, you could also help me on Patreon. Remember to hit the like button, share the video, and I will see you in the next one.
Have a great day and thanks for watching.